Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 147th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Actually, this is a QML. And if you're looking at my screen, you're wondering, what is that? That's not cute. This is a video game called Dota 2. Some of you are probably like cheering, yay, Dota. Um, this is why I haven't been posting a tutorial. I've been really playing a lot of Dota, probably more than I should. Um, also, I picked up Tom Clancy's The Division, which is just an amazing game. Oh my gosh. It gets a little dull after a while. Which is why I go back to Dota, like, constantly. I just kind of flip-flop between The Division and Dota. And once in a while, I write code. So, anyways, what we're going to be working on today, and we're going to go to the QML book on qmlbook.github.io. We're going to go Chapters and 5, Fluid Elements. And I'm not going to copy their tutorials verbatim because I really want you to go out there and read their book and eventually buy their book when it comes out. Not affiliated with them in any way, but they've made massive progress on this book and it's an amazing read thus far. But we're going to start doing animations because well, that's where QML really shines. So uh, I would suggest you go out read chapter 5 of their book and we are going to be progressing, progressing on animations and if you kind of scroll down you see there's a ton of different types of anima animation types. There's like a property animation number animation, color, rotation, pause, sequential, parallel, anchor, blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on and on. There is a lot of ways to animate in QML. What we're going to focus on today is the rotation animation. And we're going to do that because, well, our very first set of tutorials on this, we were rotating a rectangle. So we know how rotation works. So we're going to just jump on in here. We're going to go file, new file or project. And I have to apologize if I clear my throat. My throat's been like really... It's Michigan and it's spring. And when I say spring, I mean it's been a combination of uh, snow. I wake up to snow and freezing rain and then it's 60, 70 degrees by 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So it goes from like literally 20 degrees to 70 degrees in the space of a day. And it just drives me crazy and it just wrecks my my sinuses, my allergies, whatever, it just destroys them. So, all right, so to do this, we are going to jump into Dropbox here because why not? Animation one, I'm gonna paste my files in here. And I've just got a couple, I've got a background and a couple smiley faces because I like, you know, smiley faces, they make me smile. And we're gonna add our resources here. First thing we're gonna do is add prefix. I'm gonna call this files. And then in files, we are going to add existing. Make sure we're in the right path. Yep. We're going to add those. And let's give this a good build just to verify it got in there. All right. Somebody once asked me, what is all this gobbledygook in the compile output? Well, it's exactly that. It's compile output. So um, some people have skipped the, I know, oh my gosh, don't do that. Don't skip the tutorials. But some people have skipped directly into the QML portion rather than doing the 140 plus C++ tutorials. But So if you're wondering what this is, this is the compile. So if you compile your program and you have a boo-boo, it'll show up here in red and you'll have to figure out what the problem is. All right, so we're going to continue on here. We're going to get rid of this main form. And we're going to get rid of that main form delete that bad boy make sure we're calling main yes we are some of the changes in the newest version of Qt still have me kinda mystified I guess would be a good way to put it but we'll get there we're gonna do width 500 height um, I did have another comment of why do you do width and height of 500 just because I like to that's really why we're gonna do a rectangle we're going to call this body and we're going to say the width equal root dot width height equal root dot height anchors center in and we're going to say root so really at this point, all we're doing is we're just putting a giant transparent rectangle that covers the whole scene here. So it's just, this whole thing is just a rectangle. 
Um, we do that because the window or the root doesn't have all the properties that we really want. So we're going to have a hard time binding into that. So we're going to put everything inside of a rectangle called a body, if you will. And now we're going to say image, mm -hmm, maybe, there we go. I'm going to say ID, we'll call this background. And source. And this is where we're going to hook in and get the actual file from our resource. We're going to say QRC for cute resource content. Whack, whack. And then we got to give it a path, which is files slash images slash background. That, uh, was that a JPEG? Yeah, that is a JPEG. See, that's the, that's the bad thing about video games, is you can never really get video games out of your brain. As I'm sitting here writing this, I'm like, you know, I think when I play Dota tonight, I'm either going to play Phantom Assassin or Spirit Breaker, just because I want to be just a real jerk. Ah. I cannot type. Very sorry about that. There we go. Anchors dot center in and root. Actually, we want to center this in body, sorry. So we're just going to take this image and we're going to load it. We're going to center it in our rectangle. We're going to just load that up and that's what it looks like. Um, I want to actually scale this down a little bit here. So we're going to play around with the image. Um, whoopsie. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say fill mode image Preserve aspect fit, that way it'll scale the way we expect it to. And I'm gonna just because I'm gonna I've already done this, I'm gonna cheat a little and I already know the size I want to give it. So there's our, our real trippy background here. And if we resize this window, you can see you know it's it goes like that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually animate this and make this whole thing rotate, and it's gonna be really trippy looking when we get it done. Why? Because, well, why not? All right, so we're going to say, um, I want to back up here. In our root, we're going to add a property, and I don't think we've done this before. Um, a property is, well, a variable, but we give it an actual type, which we haven't had to do previously, and we give it a name, running, and we give it the initial value, which is false. So let's go over that again real quick, because that may have been confusing for some of you that have skipped. Blasphemy, I know. Don't skip the tutorials. Start at one and go all the way up. But anyways, if you have skipped and you come directly to the QML tutorials, a variable is simply something that'll change. So it's called a property in QML, um, because behind the scenes there's, I'm guessing, inline compilation going on. Um, where you have a getter and a setter, so you have a property that can be set or get. If that sounds confusing, it's because you've skipped the tutorials. A getter and a setter. You can get the value or set the value. That's what a property does. So behind the scenes, there's probably two functions that are compiled in line. I don't know that for sure, but I'm going to take a wild guess. So bool, obviously, is true or false, and we're setting it to false initially. So this is available in the scope within root. Now, what we're going to do here is we are going to add in a rotation animation. And we're going to play around with this a little bit. So there's our rotation animation, and we're going to say on rotation. I want to kind of explain something here. See the rotation property. Notice how I said property, because it is a property. You can either get or set the property. Now, if we say rotation, yeah, let's say rotation 35, we would rotate this. But what we want to do is we want to actually animate that. So we're saying rotation animation on the property, rotation. Wouldn't make sense to do a rotation animation on X or rotation animation on left. You know, we want to do this on the rotation property of the image object. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say from, we have a starting point, 0, 
to, I'm going to say 360, because you can only go 360 degrees. We're going to say duration, and let's say 3000, and we're going to say running equal root dot running and we're going to bind our running property of the rotation animation to the root running property which we created so if you follow along with all the tutorials there's a signal in the slot going on in the background so we're connecting that running to this running now what we're going to do is we're going to make a mouse area here which we've done before and we're going to say anchors dot fill and we want to basically fill on background and we're going to say on clicked we want to set the property root wow that was a misspell <laughs> root dot running equal true so let's Let's kind of examine this thing a little bit here. We've got the property that we have created, our getter and our setter. We have a rectangle here called body. Inside our body we have an image called background and inside that we have a rotation animation which is going to change the rotation property of the image itself. We're going to rotate from 0 to 360 degrees over, you guessed it, 3000 milliseconds or 3 seconds the running property is bound to the root running which we are setting on the mouse area click so let's just enough talk let's run this thing and see what happens here oh no what have we done invalid attached object assignment what hmm Oh, yeah, that should be lowercase, not upper, because the property, let's explain what happened here. I had rotation, but it's actually rotation, lowercase. So let's give this a build. There we go. Now suddenly it compiles. One of those things you got to watch out for. Now when we click, suddenly it's animated, but it's going backwards. I don't like it that direction. I want it to go the other way. And also, you notice how it stopped. I want it to just go and go and go forever and ever because I want it to. I said so. <laughs> Why not? Let's give that a negative so we're going to change the direction and we're going to say loops and we want to do animation not infinite meaning we just want to loop this forever and ever. We could say 3, 5, 10 but we want to just loop and loop and loop. So when we run this now well, click it and it's going to go in the direction we want and it's going to just loop infinitely. That's kind of trippy. Now if we resize this window you can see what's going on here. Our image, I don't know if I can fit that into the video area, you can see our image is not a big square, it's like a rectangle and it's just spinning around and around and that's kind of making me a little dizzy so we're gonna kill that bad boy and now I kind of wanted to just play around with this a little bit and we're going to add another image in here and we're not going to animate this image I just want to kind of show you some of the kind of neat things that you can do ID smile and we're going to say source And let's take smile1.png. And we're going to say fill mode image. Whoa, I screwed that up. There we go. No, we don't. Ignore my typing. <laughs> Again. There we go. Jeez. Maybe you guys shouldn't be watching these videos. I'm not teaching you very much. All right, image preserve aspect fit. See, I've got my uh, 
my gaming keyboard set and I'm gonna blame that rather than just my own stupidity and we're gonna say anchors and we're going to say center in background let's give this a good build and run hmm it's not showing QML image cannot open file images smile one okay why not QRC probably because I misspelled the path files there we go so it's a pretty good idea to start checking that these error messages if you're getting them because um, I've been just kind of flooded with hey it compiles but nothing happens and that's really what you gotta look for it won't be in the compilation output but it'll be in the application output just because it compiles doesn't mean it's gonna run the way you expect it and there is our I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of a watermarked smiley face and you can animate underneath it and because it's transparent it comes through it's actually kind of neat so that's kind of the some of the cool things you can do with uh, QML right out of the box um, that smiley face is kind of wigging me out a little bit so we're gonna change it to the other one before I upload this bad boy same thing and we can play around with uh, we're gonna play around with some of the properties on this thing we're gonna say width we're gonna say 150 opacity I'll say 0 0.5 we'll give it a 50 percent opacity here and you can see there it is when we click it animates so pretty simple pretty neat but some of the core concepts I really wanted you to understand about animation before we start deep diving into some of these is that um, you can animate on a property uh, we're doing the rotation on the we're doing the rotation animation on the rotation property meaning that we're going to change that value over time and we can play around with this a little bit like if we change that to 300 instead of 3000 and recompile and run notice how it goes much much faster because that is the duration that's actually really annoying so we're gonna set that back to 3000 that's actually let's set it to 6 and make it go much slower just so that you can see what the duration does so in short the different properties inside the animation will determine well shocker how the animation is animated so you have an animation type which usually affects a property and if we go back to the very beginning of this conversation the QML book where are you oh, it's right in front of me derp the you know you got different things so like a property animation you can animate a property be it a, a name a number whatever but they've kind of made some helper classes here like a number animation you can set a number animation on the X position and make it actually move across the screen so you can see that in their example here so you've got a number animation on X a rotation animation on rotation so what this does is when it runs it'll actually move it and rotate it across the screen you should probably you know grab their assets and grab this code and compile and run it because it's really well done but you also have other things like color animation and then you can actually pause and you can do animation sequentially or in parallel and you can change anchor properties and things of like that there's a lot you can do and I know some of you are going vector 3d animation sweet yes you can actually do vector 3d graphics in this so that's kind of a lot of information I'd really encourage you to go out read this chapter because it's really well done I can't I can't pitch their book enough it's helped me quite a bit um, and just play around with this example which I'll post up on my website voidrooms.com if you go out to uh, what is it voidrooms.com and you just go to tutorials and you get a cute and it'll be way in the back way 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 on page 15 and if you're so inclined there are I forget how many of us, tons of us out in the Void Realms Facebook group, hundreds of us, all different languages, all different technologies, we just help each other out. So go ahead and you know join up. We usually get members in within 15, 20 minutes of requesting. Uh, we've got a couple admins beside myself. Um, 
I was going to say something very profound, but it has escaped my mind, which may be even more profound. I think I need to go play some video games. So if you're playing Dota or The Division, I will see you in-game.